Welcome everyone to another episode of Price Targets with your host Bitcoin Jack. Welcome back. We postponed the video yesterday to um, pretty much wait for the uh, expiration date today. So quarterlies expired, expiring today, options expired 8 a.m. UTC this morning and um, futures are about to expire in a couple of hours uh, and then we're gonna be fully into the new quarter trading wise. Um, it's interesting to see that the narrative has really gotten a hold of the market. Um, Doug Klon of Terra Luna has been buying $125 million worth of BTC on a daily basis now. Um, he's bought another clip last night. And um, so for now, it seems that he's going to keep on doing that. Um, $125 million, I think he's supposed to get like... 3 billion. I'm not really sure if that in includes the uh, like 400 million, 500 million they acquired before. Um, so that puts us at nearly 1 billion they have in reserves now. So another 2 billion to go, or perhaps 2.5 billion to go. So it's quite a few days of buying. At the, at the same time, it's not that much when you think about it. But if that is, you know, if they're not the only one moving in the market. So interesting times, um, very exciting in terms of, this, well, to see um, whether there's going to be other protocols following um, and whether this narrative actually can can become a catalyst to, um, to propel Bitcoin much higher. Um, obviously, you know, for now, I'm still cautious. The one thing that people have been looking at, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> been a little bit under the weather, um, is that this may be a running flat um, and then this low never managed to actually make new lows. And then this still is like the fourth wave into um, the fifth wave. So I don't know, could, could very well be the case. Um, but we're just going to be looking at the shorter time frames for now. I don't want to jump the gun. Uh, we talked about trying to see and wait for weakness. So if we zoom in here on the daily, we wanted to see weak uh, weakness around this level and then lose it again. That didn't really happen, so no trigger there. So then the next thing um, I would be anticipating from here on out is priced to pump into this level up here, the 47 level that we talked about last week on Monday. And that's not necessarily a short for me, but I do think that market is going to get a little bit overheated here. Um, there's going to be stops here, stops here. So that liquidity is probably going to be used to cover um, longs a little bit. And then it kind of really depends on whether the orange zone here, which was a liquidity gap between here and here, whether that's going to find support or whether that's going to break down. If it finds support, I do think that price is going to be trading in this range. So between 44 and 55 ish, 54 ish, 52 ish. Um, and that's then uh, the range we should be playing. If it breaks down, that's a scenario we talked about on Monday. We go into the level, trade through orange, get back below, retest the trend line. Um, I'd say that's um, a short opportunity into the daily level here, um, into this trend line up here. So that's pretty much the simplest way of putting it without you know, making any long-term predictions here. Um, let's see, ETH, kind of still waiting on our setup from the outline on Monday. This is our weekly level at 0 0.0707, uh, which is kind of being tested now. And then the block that's related to that is this one here. So what we're... What I'm waiting for is to see if price can trade up into the monthly 
which coincides with the weekly block here. And if that gets rejected and trades back below this weekly level, and then I anticipate lower here. So that's the setup I'm kind of waiting for. If highs comes back down here, and so wait, if price trades down here after testing the level up here and then trades back up here and makes new highs like that, then I do think we reclaim the range and um, we're going to trade into the level up here. So essentially two setups, failure to gain and then lose it and not hold the weekly level up here, the 707. And we're going to trade that down to 0 0.065, 0 0.066. Um, if it does retest this, hold it, trade back above it, has a breakout here. So kind of like a, you know, a little cup. Then I do think we're going to go to 0 0.08 to 0 0.085 ish up here. Get some vis visit like these two picks there. Hope that makes sense. Um, and then Luna, you know, obviously um, a lot of talk around Luna. Um, if we look at the daily here, kind of does look a little bit sketchy. Um, it's pretty oversold in the lower time frames at the moment. But if we compare it to, you know, just price action that happened earlier, this kind of does make me, this looks a little bit like what we saw here. Um, so let's see. I think this is a larger consolidation structure. Um, the comparison is this right here. But then again, this could be a fractal that where this is this, right? If that makes sense. So, um, Luna is, um, if it loses this and doesn't reclaim it, I do think there's, uh, it's going to trade into the, uh, 0.016 level. If it holds it and curls up like this, um, then we just try and long the mid level into the breakout and hope for the best. I think that's it. Um, short, clean. We're going into the weekend. Um, a lot of bullish news surrounding Bitcoin. So for now, especially if, if you look at the daily, it's just, you know, one, two, three, four. There's literally no weakness on the daily time frame to be seen right now. Um, would I blindly long this? No, absolutely not. And um, do I think we can trade higher, much higher? Yes, I do. Um, for that, I want to get a proper, at least a daily structure uh, with a pullback to um, to make that happen. So I don't know. Weekends up, probably not going to be around much for trading in the weekend and then reevaluate on Monday. So I hope you guys have a, a great weekend and um, see you on Monday. Peace.